Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Boot series. In this video, we build upon the Greeting Web Services project, constructing a Spring Data JPA repository to manage persistence behaviors for the greeting entity. Let's get started. I've opened the sample Spring Boot application in the Spring Tool Suite. I'll open the POM XML file. I'm going to add the Spring Boot Starter JPA and HSQLDB dependencies. The version numbers for these dependencies are not required because our POM file extends the Spring Boot parent POM. Next, open the Greeting Entity class. Annotate the class with at entity. This annotation denotes this class to be a JPA persistent entity model class, and it will be registered by the Spring Data Framework when the application starts. A annotate the ID attribute with at ID and at generated value. The at ID annotation indicates that this attribute is the primary key identifier for the entity. The at generated value annotation tells JPA that the values for the ID attribute are created by the underlying database. Now let's create the Spring Data repository for the greeting entity. First, create a new package named org.example.ws.repository. Within that package, Create a new interface named Greeting Repository. The interface extends the JPA repository interface from the Spring Data JPA framework. JPA Repository is a generic interface and requires the types of the entity class and the primary key identifier of the entity class. In our case, the entity class is Greeting and the greeting class has a primary key identifier type of long. The class is annotated with the at repository stereotype so that Spring registers the repository component when the application starts. Next, open the greeting service bean class. Let's remove the temporary helper methods that we've been using to simulate data persistence. We'll use the auto-wired annotation to inject an instance of the greeting repository into the greeting service beam. Now let's update each of the business service methods to use the greeting repository to manage the persistence of greeting entities. A Spring Data JPA repository exposes a single method to both create and update entities. Therefore, we will add conditional logic to the create and update business service methods to ensure that the state of the supplied greeting entity is appropriate for the method called. We return null to tell clients of the greeting service 
that the operation has failed. Within the update method, we'll check to ensure that a greeting has already been persisted with the supplied primary key identifier. If it does not already exist in the database, we cannot update it, and therefore the operation fails. Now let's create SQL scripts to create the structure of the database and initialize it with data. First, create a subdirectory named resources under the source main directory. When Maven pa packages the application, all the files and directories located in the resources directory will be placed at the root of the application class path. Next, create a subdirectory of resources named data slash hsqldb. Within the resources data hsqldb directory, create a file named schema.sql, which will contain SQL statements to create data structures within the database. As you can see, there are drop table and create table statements for the greeting entity. Next, Create a file named data.sql within the same directory. This file contains SQL statements to initialize the database tables with values. As you can see, we are initializing the greeting entity with our standard greetings. We need to provide Spring with a bit of data source configuration. Spring Boot's auto configuration module searches for data source configuration in the application properties file by default. First, create a subdirectory of source main resources named config. Within the config directory, create a file named application.properties. When a Spring Boot application starts, it searches for a configuration file named application.properties at the class path root and a class path subdirectory named config. The first two properties provide configuration that is passed to Hibernate. The naming strategy tells Hibernate how to convert entity classes and attribute names into database table and column names. The second Hibernate property instructs Hibernate to only validate the entity class structure and relationships match the database schema. When using the HSQLDB database with Spring Boot, by default, Hibernate will try to create and drop the database using an auto-generated DDL from the entity classes. Since we are providing a schema SQL script, we only want Hibernate to validate the schema. The final two properties tell Spring Boot that we are providing explicit database structure and initialization scripts, as well as their location on the class path. Let's run the application and see our hard work in action. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run to start the embedded Tomcat server on port 8080. Let's scroll back in the logs and see that Spring has executed both the schema and data SQL scripts, creating the HSQLDB database for us. I'm going to open my RESTful web service client and test the greeting web services. I expect to see the same responses since I've not altered the business logic, but I'm simply obtaining the data from an HSQLDB database rather than the static hash map. I'll test retrieving all the greetings and a single greeting. Next I'll create a greeting and see that the greeting has been added to the collection. Now I'll update the greeting. Finally, I'll delete a greeting. 
and when I retrieve all the greetings again, the greeting has been removed. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on leanstacks.com.